In this video, we will solve this system of linear equation using Gauss-Seidel method to solve the next three iterations. And so let's get started. So the first step when we use Gauss-Seidel method is to create an x1, an x2, and an x3 based off of these three equations. So meaning, so I will take this first equation here, 4x1 minus x2 plus 2x3 is equal to 12 and isolate just x1. So what I would do here is, th is this, 4x1 is equal to 12 plus x2 minus 2x3. I'm essentially moving everything over to this side. From here, I divide by 4. And so I would get x1 is equal to 12 plus x2 minus 2x3 divided by 4. This equation will be very important when we use the Gauss-Seidel method. Now we will also do x2 and x3. And now we will do x2, same exact idea. So I'm going to move everything over except um, 8x2 is equal to negative 20 minus 3 x1 plus 2x3. From here, I can divide by 8 and say x2 is equal to negative 20 minus 3x1 plus 2x3 divided by 8. Another important equation. And finally, we'll do x3. So x3 is kind of simple. We can say that x3 is equal to 10 minus x1 minus x2 divided by 3. And so if you want right now, you can pause the video here and write down what we have. And so now we will construct a table. So we want to solve x1, x2, x3, and we will use three iterations. The first one we already know, which is 0, 0, 0. Um, we know this because here is to the initial guess, x1 is 0, x2 is 0, x3 is 0. And so that's one set of numbers that we know. But we want three um, additional iterations. So we want 2, um, we want 3, and we want 4. And so let's do this. So in order to get the first one, what I'm going to do here is plug in 0, 0, 0 for this equation here. So 12 plus now I can write this down. So 12 plus 0 minus 0 divided by 4 would give us um, 3. 12 divided by 4 is 3. And now we will do x2. Now the trick here is that x1 is no longer 0, it's 3. So wh whenever I see an x1, I plug in 3. So I get negative 20 minus 3 times 3 plus 2 times 0 divided by 8 and this right here would give us negative 29 over 8 and now we will do the third one so with the third one same idea x1 is 3 and x2 is now negative 29 over 8 you ignore the zeros and so we would get 10 minus 3 minus parentheses minus 29 over 8 uh, divided by 3 and this would give us 85 over 24 and so this is one iteration and now we will do the second iteration same exact idea so now x1 we plug in these set of numbers for x1 so we would get 12 plus x2, x2 is this number right here, negative 29 over 8, so negative 29 over 8, minus 2 times x3, x3 we said was 85 over 24, so 85 over 24, this whole thing will be divided by 4, and so we would get, um, we would get 31 over 96. And now we do the second one, x2. And so what we do here is x1 is now 31 over 96, but x3 remains 85 over 24. So we have negative 20 minus 3 times
times x1 we said was 31 over 96 plus 2 times 85 over 24 divided by 8 and we get negative 1.736 this is x2 and finally we will do x3 so we now know x1 is 31 over 96 x2 is negative 1.736 and we plug it in here so 10 minus x1 was uh, 31 over 96 minus parentheses minus 1.736 divided by 3 and we would get 3.804 and finally we will do the third iteration and just a quick recap actually so the first iteration for x1 was 3 x2 was negative 29 over 8 and x3 was 85 over 24. The second iteration, x1 became 31 over 96, x2 became negative 1.736, and x3 became 3.804. Now, in the third and final iteration, I will make, you know, instead of a fraction, I will get a whole decimal number. So it might be more clear. So same idea here. I plug in 12 plus x2, x2 is negative 1.736 and x3 is 3.804 so I write 12 plus uh, parentheses negative 1.736 minus 2 times 3.804 um, divided by 4 and this right here would give us 0 0.664 and now this is x1 and now we will do x2, same exact idea. x1 is now 0 0.664, but x3 remains the same of 3.804. So we get negative 20 minus 3 times 0 0.664 plus 2 times x3 became 3.804 divided by 8. This answer would give us negative 1.798 finally we'll do the last one so again x1 is now 0 0.664 and x2 is negative 1.798 so we plug it in so 10 minus 0 0.664 minus parentheses minus 1.798 divided by 3 and we would get 3.711. Now a quick explanation. As we go on with each iteration, the answer gets more and more accurate. So x1, we're saying it's going to be 0 0.664. x2, we're saying it's going to be negative 1.798. And x3, we're saying it's going to be 3.711. Now we can check this. Is this a good approximation? And so I will type this problem in my calculator. So let's do that. So menu, um, algebra, uh, solve system of equation one. We have three equation. So we wanna solve x1, x2, and x3. And so we now just need to write down the equations. So four times x1 minus x2 plus two times x3 is equal to 12. And three times x1 plus 8 uh, times x2 minus 2 times x3 is equal to negative 20. Finally, x1 plus x2 plus 3 times x3 is equal to 10. And so simply I hit control, enter. And so the actual answer for x1 is 0 0.68. 6. x2 negative 1.829 uh, and x3 it was 3.714 what we got after three iterations for x1 was 0 0.664 so it's off by like 0 0.02 x2 we got negative 1.798 
So again, very small amount. And X3, we got 3.711. So it was very close. Had we done more iterations, like five, six, seven, the answer would become more and more uh, close to the actual answer. And that is how we can solve systems of linear equations using the Gauss-Seidel method.